so we'll begin. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, along with the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force and the other arms of the protective services involved in the fight against crime, continue to work assiduously to ensure the safety and security of the national community. To date, we have taken 126 firearms off the streets and recovered 12,480 assorted ammunitions and 31 magazines. We have destroyed large quantities of marijuana, totaling millions of dollars. We have held several persons for various offenses, including homicide. There has been a 50% decrease in the homicide rate since the start of the state of the emergency, and there has been a 50% decrease in serious crimes. There has been a suppression of the incidence of gang-related homicides during the period, as there has been a successful disruption of gang activities which has allowed enforcement agencies to gather critical intelligence. An investigation has been launched into the escape of two prisoners who were detained at the Point Fortin Police Station in connection with a homicide in Southwestern Division. This investigation has been launched by the ACP for South, Southwestern, and Central, Mr. Fitzroy Federance. One of the prisoners, what I would like to do is give you a description of the prisoners. One of them hails from Palisaco and the other from Santa Flora. The man from Palisaco is of mixed descent, is approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall and 30 years old. The second man who is from Santa Flora has short black hair, also mixed descent, athletically built and approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall. He is dark brown in complexion. Both men are and may be armed and extremely dangerous. Members of the public are asked to be alert as they go about their business and can call any one of our contact numbers if they see either of the men. They are 800 0699, 800 and 555. The TTPS has also alerted the Coast Guard for their hunt and is also part of the, the, the team that is looking for the men. In Northern Division, around 5.30 a.m. on October 9th, a 71-year-old male who resides at Brasso Seiko Arima was warded on the third floor of the Mount Hope Hospital with heart-related complications. Sadly, the 71-year-old male allegedly jumped from the third floor balcony and died on the spot. Police officers from the St. Joseph Police Station responded, reviewed the body, investigations are continuing. Now on to some good news. Celebrating community building relationships is the theme of the Victim and Witness Support Group official launch, which will take place tomorrow from 1 p.m. at the San Fernando City Hall Auditorium. We're also inviting members of the media to attend and also the public. You will recall that Margaret Sampson Brown, who's the manager of the Victim and Witness Support Group, spoke at length about the unit and a lot of the work that they do in terms of providing services, not only to the officers and the civilian staff of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, but also to the victims and witnesses of crime. So I'd also like to invite the public to that. I think I'm going to ask Mr. Captain Alexander to now give his update. Hi, good day. Over the last 20, 72 hours, sorry, the Defense Force conducted a total of 85 patrols in several areas of Trinidad and Tobago. In addition to the usual areas of patrol, the Defense Force also uh, patrolled Point Fortin, Labrie, Rusilla, Quinam, Los Eros, and Cedros. This was supported by two coordinate search operations, 18 maritime and five aerial patrols in and around the coastline of Trinidad and, and Tobago. At approximately 3.55 a.m. on the 9th October, Coast Guard vessel CG027 slipped berth from Stobles Bay to investigate an alleged stabbing incident on Gaspar Gandhi Island. Two females and one male involved in the incident were taken back to the Stobles Bay where one of the females was medically treated while 
by the duty medic, sorry, and a male suspect was handed over to the Four Roads Police Station. We'll Thank open you. the floor for, for any questions that you may have. Wait for the mic. Wait, wait for the mic. I can give you that figure. Twenty six persons for drug offenses. Reach of curfew eight, no, reach of curfew three, firearm related one, other offenses seven, serious offenses two, outstanding warrant four, inquiries ten, traffic offenses fixed penalty notices four, firearm ammunition one and 27 rounds. Um, Read for the period. Drug offenses, 787. Other offenses, 230. Serious offenses, 788. Homicide investigations, 61. Breach of curfew, 236. Inquiries, 457. Traffic offenses, 809. Ammunition, 12,480, plus 31 <coughs> magazines. Firearm seized, 126. Outstanding warrant, 1,143. Mr. Sam, good morning. Good you morning. claim that there's a 50% decline in serious crimes since the start of the Bingham Regency. Uh -huh. Yes, so we see serious crimes as well continue to happen. On Saturday morning, there was a rape of a Guyanese national, again in the Central Division. And we're asking, in light of serious crimes that continue to happen, is, has anything been put in place to deal with uh, situations like that, and as well as the destruction of arms and ammunition seized during the start during the state of emergency? Can you tell us when that will take place? Because I understand that training for persons have start has started. Can you oh. tell us? I will take the, f the first one first. The um, with respect to the incidents which seems to be occurring in the in the central area, I know for a fact that uh, community police has been conducting a lot of. Uh, workshops and, and meetings with residents in those areas to give them some tips on how to protect themselves. We also circulate some brochures and information that we have uh, called Women Be Wise, how to protect yourself, how to protect your home, just to arm the members of the public with some vital information that will help them to stay safe and, and um, to stay safe in their surroundings. In addition, I'm certain that we will be looking at increasing more patrols and, and, and responses in those areas to make people feel, give them a sense of security in that area. With respect to the destruction of the firearms, a training program did begin this morning, which was uh, the, the Minister of National Security was the person that delivered the feature address, and um, that actually training is going on as we speak right now. In terms of a scheduled day for the destruction to begin, I. I don't want to give a wrong date because I can't remember the date, <laughs> but soon. All right, and Captain Alexander, one question to you now. You spoke at the incident yesterday at Gaspar Grandi. You said three persons were brought back, two females, one treated. Um, is that female still warded, and can you give us some further information in terms of the suspect and what might have led to the actual stabbing? Uh, those details are not forthcoming. However, what I understand is that the, the, the female was not, um, was actually not stabbed. Um, she did sustain some bruises, and, and that's it. Uh, the male is presently under investigations. However, both females are in good health. I could provide that for you after, yes. I doubt it very much. Captain Al, good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you give us uh, an update re really the beating in Valencia, I believe it is, 
where it is alleged that a group of soldiers or two groups of soldiers uh, beat two young ladies. I know you mentioned it last night on, 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 on the news, but can you just, just give us an update since then, please? All right. Um, As in terms of the investigation. Okay. Well, the, the investigation has begun. Uh, my information thus far is that at the Swordfish Bar in Valencia, um, there was there were four females who were involved in a in a fight, and some soldiers attempted to intervene. Um, the details and the how far the investigation has reached thus far, I can't I can't share with you. However, I know that the Trinidad and Tobago Army Investigations Unit is pursuing this this um, particular incident vigorously. You can't say whether charges would be laid against any army personnel at this, uh, as it is right now, or no, 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 no. It's still in the investigative stage. Uh, any idea how long it might take? We're pursuing it at the moment. However long it takes to get to the bottom and find all the facts, um, that, that's how long it will take. Yeah. And, and Ms. Lia Sang, you mentioned um, this um, breakout by two prisoners. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, from the Point Fortin Police Station. Am yes. I correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how could that happen, ma'am? How could two prisoners break out of a police station just like that? Well, that's why I said that there's an investigation has been launched by the ACP, the Troy Frederick, to ascertain how that could have happened. Because, I mean, from a public standpoint, <clears throat> one would think that a police station is a place of security, whereby individuals who are brought in um, suspects, what have you, that they could be properly held in that particular holding bay until they <coughs> face a court of law and what have you. Mm -hmm. So what confidence then would the, would the, should the public have then in knowing that <laughs> prisoners could just break out of a, a police station willy-nilly at will? Uh, the public can have extreme confidence in the police in order to determine the how that has happened, and we rest assured that we will do our due diligence to investigate it in the shortest space of time. Can you give us an idea how they were able to break out? Did they overpower their police guards? Did they, what, what, how, how, how were they able to do it? No details are available at this point in time. Was it an inside job? No details are available <laughs> at this point in time. But as soon as uh, information comes to hand, we will communicate with the national community. But we do want to remind the public to be on the lookout for the for the prisoners. Regarding the investigation into the, 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 the escape, that investigation has been launched by, as I said, ACP Frederick. No information as to what has been understood or ascertained as yet has come to light. We are, however, getting pictures, so and they will be circulated to you, through you all so that the public can be alerted to who those persons are and that they can contact us if we sightsee them anywhere. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time.